So in this video, I'm going to talk about the time after my 2.46.44 marathon in Florence in November 2019 and my six bone stress injuries after that. So what went wrong after the Florence marathon? So first of all, I took zero time off really. I felt fine on Wednesday. When I say I felt fine, if I'm being completely honest, I was definitely tired, but I had this mentality that I wasn't as tired as I had been before and that I was training under a coach and that I was doing a lot of things really smart so it was kind of like a good tired in my head and I went for what I thought was a shorter run which probably was about 10 kilometers and I ran on Friday and on Saturday and I just kept adding more and more volume I think I had my first workout, not the Saturday after the marathon, but a week after that again. I had really no idea about heart rate training. At the time, I think I thought I had an idea of heart rate training. When I now know what I know, I definitely should have picked up on the signals of my heart rate being a lot higher on my easy runs than what it normally was instead. I was training under the guidance of a coach. He's used to training renters and not the marathon distance. He trained me on pace. So again, when I was doing that workout, I think I was doing a thousand meters. I was trying to hit, hit these paces and I wasn't looking at my heart rate to see if that workout was, or that pace was really appropriate for my level. I do remember being really tired that week after when I was in Copenhagen, really hungry, which makes total sense because of course I should have been resting. Now I would take three weeks of complete rest after a marathon. And then I remember, I think maybe like three weeks out, I had this tingling feeling in my left calf. It wasn't like that bad and I just continued to work out and I didn't think it was anything in particular um, but it just would not go away and I saw a physiotherapist and after a little bit I did take three days off and I started listening to all these podcasts about you know and googling about what to do when you have this tingling feeling in your calf and people were like yeah take a couple days off and I did that but if anything, the pain just got worse with more rest. And I got really frustrated because I was running a lot less. So I wasn't understanding how I was taking a break from running. And in my head, I was then taking a break from my goals. It was still hurting a lot. And then after about a month, I think I got an MRI scan and I saw that I had a bone stress injury. And it was grade two, so it wasn't that serious. It was in my tibia. And I was told I needed to take six weeks off running. And that I would need to use six weeks to build up to the mileage where I was at. And my coach told me that really I won't lose a lot of fitness as long as I cross train. So I was motivated. I thought, you know, I haven't had a lot of injuries and my best friend is also a distance runner. So I know a lot about how common running injuries are. Started cross training a lot. It was very boring. And then I started with a run to walk program. So I think it was nine minutes of walking, one minute of running, and then that times three. And then I, I slowly reduced my walks and did runs instead of the walk so eventually it was 10 minutes of running times three so essentially 30 minutes of running consecutively and then I would build up my runs until 
more like an hour but I remember feeling like this process took forever and I was definitely going about it a lot slower than the six weeks I was told it would take for me to get back to my volume pre my injury if you've ever had a ball stress injury it just feels like it takes forever and it really sucks it's probably one of the worst injuries I've heard to get because you have to take so long off running which means you have to be very careful when you're loading your body again and then things changed because now I knew what it took to be at that 246-44 level. I knew that I had this threshold run on Tuesdays and on Thursdays and on Saturdays and my long run on Sundays. I knew the amount of volume I needed to be at. I switched my mindset when I was injured into like what, what can I spend more time on doing? And that was really for me about learning about running. So I started reading books after books, everything about stress fractures, about building bone, everything about nutrition because that was definitely something that I was getting a lot of questions on because when a female has a bone stress injury that very often relates to under fueling. So I started seeing a nutritionist and I started really learning about how to balance my plate and my level at the time that was about what are what are carbs, what are what foods should you eat more of what veggies should you eat when protein that was definitely something I was lacking honestly back then I just had very little knowledge when it came to nutrition I didn't really know what carbs were I knew kind of what was healthy like I knew fruits and veggies was healthy and probably other foods I understood were unhealthy, but I really didn't have an understanding of how much food my body needed specific to training and like calories, understanding how many calories are in foods and how to kind of change my nutrition depending on my training. I had zero knowledge on that. So that was something I dedicated a lot of time to as well as just understanding training, specifically marathon training and what elites were doing. So, but the bad thing was that I started realizing how far away I was from the best. I had a very specific idea of where I wanted to be, not just like as far as a goal, like I had this goal of wanting to compete in the Olympics, but I had this idea of what that training would look like. And that looked like two to three threshold sessions per week and a long run. I was, because I was so determined, and I am a very determined person, kept on pushing my mileage. And I don't think my coach understood my personality and how my personality could hold me back because I was always on that limit as far as what my body was able to absorb. So even though from the outside, if you compare to the elites, this wasn't as nearly as much running, it was a lot of running and a lot of load for a body like mine who was still so new to running. So when I was at about 80 kilometers, I had some pretty hardcore threshold runs. So I was running 10 to 12 thousand meter repeats at race pace and then I was doing a lot of easy miles in addition to that again what's important is looking at that training in isolation and then comparing it to you know what other people do because obviously there are other people who are more elite who are doing you know loads more than that but what's important to look at which I'm realizing now is how much that was for my body who'd only been marathon training for one year so in late June I had this pain in my leg again and of course, if you've ever been injured and you feel a similar pain at a similar place, it's very psychological stressful because you know exactly what you'll go through. So I did take time off right away and I did get it checked out and it was another bone stress injury. So obviously that was extremely tough to get that message, but Again, I tried to have that mindset that at least I got it checked out quicker. It didn't take me close to two months like the last time. So I want to share my story because I see so many motivational videos and motivational people talking about how you need to push, you need to train harder, you need to get out the door. and. 
Well, it's true that we do live in a society where a lot of us have desk jobs and a lot of us definitely do need to move more and we do need to be smarter about our food and eat more fruits and veggies. There is a fine line between pushing and training hard and pushing too much. And as you can see in my case and in my story, I was pushing too much. The reason I say this and share this is because if you're watching this and you're either about to pursue a marathon or you have pursued a marathon, chances are that your personality is a lot like mine. That you do push a lot. And that is something that you have to be very aware of, especially when you have other things in your life, other stressors. You're not just a marathon runner. That is really what I want my channel to be all about. It is managing life with your running goals and being smarter about your training and your nutrition to achieve those goals, feeling really strong and confident and not burnt out and exhausted all the time because let's face it what's the point of achieving that goal if that's the case the whole reason is that you can feel like a badass right so the truth is that what my mind wants is not what my body can achieve it took me three years to realize that my determination was slowing me down so if you're watching this and you're thinking that you need more willpower to do those hard workouts, the long workouts, all the miles, the proper nutrition, and to quit the alcohol, I have been at the other end of that spectrum where I've had the willpower to push through. And it's gotten me nowhere. Okay, that's not entirely true. I did achieve that 246-44 marathon. However, my point is that there is a reason you need willpower. It is because you are pushing your body to its capabilities. And when you do so, you need to understand what you need to sacrifice. And that sacrifice might be work time. It might be letting go of deadlines at work to be less stressed. It might be not helping as much at home. It might be not partying with your friends and instead going to bed early. And that word right there, sacrifice, that's the part I had not accepted. I wanted to be and do it all. And to be honest, I really still struggle with this. So what you don't see in this story is what I did outside of running. So at this time, I had my first job at a startup. I had just graduated from Norwegian School of Economics with a bachelor's degree, and I moved back to Oslo this dream of starting my business in California. I was 21 years old, started again my first job, and I had no prior business experience. I wanted to do exceptionally well. As you can probably already tell, I am very uh, ambitious. In order for me to get my MBA in California because my degree would be covered in Norway, so it would be extremely expensive, I needed to be accepted to one of the top business schools in the US. At only age 22, with one year of work experience, I knew that that was gonna be really, really difficult. And on top of that, I knew I was a horrible test taker because I applied for college in the US for undergrad and I had to take the SAT and I did not score well, which is why I ended up at Norwegian School of Economics where you don't need a test like that. So over the years, I didn't give up. I progressed my runs, I continued to learn, I cross-trained. I said to myself that my story might have started different, might have started with a lot of success, but this is where it gets hard and this is where I grow. So what I've come to realize is that there is a neglected area among a lot of YouTube channels and among people at least I've seen and follow on social media, and that is mental stress. So I saw a pattern in my injuries, and that was that they occurred during particularly stressful times. So for instance, in February 2021, my third manager was laid off, and I was giving more responsibility at my startup job and this was in the middle of my last attempt to take the GMAT that I needed to take in order to be accepted 
for my MBA program in California where my dream of starting my business was. Keep in mind, I was already balancing on knives as my days looked like eat, GMAT, run, bike to work, eat, work, eat, work, bike home, strength training, GMAT, and prep food. Like It was a lot during that period. I decided to quit my job despite knowing that the MBA admissions officer would likely question me quitting my job six months before getting my MBA. Studied for four weeks straight and I found myself in a very stressful time having to make that really hard decision of quitting my job also in the middle of a time where it was COVID, right? And my team at the startup really needed me because like I said, my manager had been laid off. So my training load didn't increase during this time. Everything was the same, the same as it had been for months. But what did change was this mental stress. Or since I was training so close to my threshold for what my body could handle of physical stress, that mental stress pushed me over so that I got yet another bone stress injury. That is what I saw while I was getting my MBA and I had another bone stress injury. It was, it was after I'd been traveling back to Norway with the jet lag after the final exam period. Even though I no longer have the bone stress injuries that I had before, every time I can tell my body's about to get injured is after I've had a lot of this mental stress. And that's why it's something that I'm definitely gonna be talking a lot more about on my channel because it's something I've seen has affected my injuries and my recovery a lot. So where am I at right now? Okay, so to not bore you too much with my long story, I have spent a lot of time reflecting and analyzing. So I'm an extremely ambitious person with the mindset that anything is possible as long as you commit to the process. Really, I truly do believe this. And although I've had many setbacks, I did graduate with an MBA from Radio School of Management in June 2023, and I've launched my protein muffin company, Stay Satisfied, in August 2022. So I have many non-running related goals, and among them is inspiring others to run and eat smarter, which is why I've started this YouTube channel. And now I'm well aware of my priorities, and I'm aware that I'm not a full-time athlete who is dedicated to nothing but running. It means that I can help educate recreational runners just like you. I started from zero running. I used to sail to 46-44 marathon. And not only do I want to run a faster time, I want to do so in the right way and with feeling my strongest and being my healthiest to the people around me. So not by being this person who is needing everyone to do everything for me all the time so that I can pursue this one and only goal, which is running as fast as absolutely possible. And I think that's an important point to emphasize because I think that's something that you need to ask yourself. Are you willing to give up and what are you not willing to give up? And what do you want your journey to look like? Because that is something I'm very clear about. I know that marathon running is a goal next to my career goals and I am willing to spend a longer time reaching my marathon goals because it is so important for me to grow my protein muffin company and to share the knowledge through this YouTube channel. Subscribe and like to follow my journey, starting with the comeback series where I dive deep into everything I've learned about running load, sleep, stress management, nutrition, strength training, hydration, cross training, alcohol, traveling, listening to your body, and how women are not small men. Thank you so much for watching.